for the artists, for the passionate. Welcome to the Adventures Elsewhere podcast. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Adventures Elsewhere podcast. I am your host Jade Black and today I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm talking about how I won Spark Pit. And more than anything this is about my approach, how I came up with a lot of ideas, how I made sure I had enough material and how I tried to be innovative and I think innovation is something that's really really important not just for Spark Pit but for any pitch contest making yourself stand out in some way or another. As always I'm not here explicitly to give writing advice I'm more talking about my craft, my process, what works for me and all of that jazz. This is more than anything supposed to be a springboard for you creating your own ideas and maybe giving you a little bit of an idea of starting points and things like that so that you can, if you're really stuck but you want to compete in something as big a spark pit as opposed to a smaller pitch event like Pit Dark, for example, is that sort of thing because I don't want to be the guy that's gotten halfway up the ladder the publishing ladder and then soars off what's beneath me. I don't want to be that guy because I know from being a prompt host as much as anything else there are some really really great projects out there that haven't been published yet and it's genuinely a travesty. So I'm gonna talk about the day Spark Pit was announced because oh boy was this a roller coaster for me (laughs) because I had just gotten off a call with a different publisher who had made me an offer and I had to turn them down for numerous reasons, I don't want to say who. And then five minutes after I had to reject that publisher, I went onto Twitter and saw Spark had been announced. Literally five minutes. And I was like, holy shit, because Shadow Spark were my dream house. And I thought, okay, there's actually a chance I could be part of that. There's actually a chance. So day one, I got to work, (laughs) is the deal I worked from the day it was announced. And my first thought with trying to figure out where to start was, I mean, where the hell do you begin? This was a pitch contest that was going to be running for a whole month. That's a lot. As opposed to, you know, a day where you have three pitches maximum. So the first thing I did was just read the rules really, really thoroughly. The main question I had was, are images allowed? Because in some pitch contests, they're mandatory, for example, mood pitch, and in some they are disallowed, so pit mad, rest in peace pit mad, and some it's all if you can if you want. And with Spark Pit, there was no restriction on images, but more importantly, there was no restriction on media at all. So what that meant to me was, hey, I can use videos in some way. I didn't know what that was going to be right at the start, but that was definitely something I kept in my back pocket. And I immediately started to think cross-discipline. This is something that's really important in just about every field with any project. I genuinely wholeheartedly believe that. 
I have experience in many different creative industries. I'm not just a writer. I'm also an artist, a composer, a game designer. I've studied marketing in the past as well. So there was a lot I could bring to the table. And obviously, with no restrictions on images, art was the obvious thing I could bring. But I wanted to get other things in there. I wasn't quite sure how to at first. I'll get onto that later. And I also, initial thoughts was, okay, but how am I going to come up with 31 days worth of content for this? And almost immediately, like super, super fast, I had prompt templates. I have mixed feelings about this going back and sticking to a prompt template as a really strict template like I did, because it's not flexible and it's not adaptable, and maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. Mixed feelings about that. And some of the things I did work out from the prompt template have actually now made it into the Thrills prompts and have influenced some of the changes for the year anniversary. But yeah, prompt template was a really good starting point, because things like I had, um, it was more about the prompt titles than what they actually were. So One Line Wednesday, I immediately undermining myself, not like I've done that before on this podcast. Thursday Thrill was the one that really stuck with me on that one, because Thursday Thrill, like that's such a sort of established thing now, and there's got to be something to that I can do. And there was. I also want to outline where I was at when Spark Pit was announced, because this did shape things a fair bit. So Mr. Nakagami was standby, it was done. Black Executioner was in need of line edits, but you know, that's a couple of days work, so I was more than happy to pitch that, to like plan for pitching that. Snake Bite, I was a little bit tentative about, because that was a pretty much fresh 1.1 draft. What I mean by 1.1 draft, for those that don't know, by the way, is I handwrite all my first drafts, then I type them up. The typed up first draft is 1.1, because there are some very, very light edits that go into that, but like, no actual edits, so it's not enough to call it anything more than 1.1. So I was a bit hmm about that, but I know I'm a quick editor and I knew there wasn't much editing that needed to be done for Snake Bite. The first draft of that past the first few chapters was super, super tidy and I knew that. So I was quite happy to plan for pitching that. The question mark was over the elegance for Penstemon, which is Coney's book in the Determined Ones, because I had it in my head because I think partly but just because of the drafting process, which I've talked about before, I had it in my head that it was a complete and utter mess, and it was just going to be a nightmare to even look at, and that wasn't really true. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was a mess, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I thought it was. But I didn't know how... I didn't know how bad it was or how long it would take me to edit it because it's, even though it was not necessarily any more messy than other projects I've had to edit, the editing process and everything for that had to be a bit different and I didn't know how that would impact the time it took. So I ended up effectively making two different pitch plans. I made an A plan and a B plan. So, from the prompt template, I effectively, and the sort of basic maths of the month, I split the month into four different weeks and sort of planned a week for each book. So there was a week for Mr. Nakagami, a week for Black Executioner, a week for Snakebite, and then after that is when it the A versus B plan came in because it wasn't clear whether I'd be running Penstemon or not. If I was running Penstemon, it would just be standard week for Penstemon, then three days at the end, which I 
did have a vague idea of, but like not really until very, very late. And then the B plan instead was, okay, but I could then bring comic strips and playlists and little fun graphics that are just made. And I didn't really know how I was going to look, but I had materials planned so that should Penstemon not be ready, I could very quickly throw something together based on stuff I had. I'm going to talk about how day one dictated everything, and this is something that has really impacted the thrills prompts as well. The first day of August 2023 was a Tuesday, so I knew on day one I had to come out swinging. I had to come out with the biggest, boldest thing I'd done with the best pitch. Because, I mean, all your pitches need to be good, obviously, but there's always going to be one or two or ten pitches that are better than the rest, is the deal. That's just going to be how it is. There are going to be ones that are stronger and weaker. So Tuesday was a big day, and that has become Tuesday Teaser for the Thrills prompt. <laughs> for what it's worth. That's where that came from. So I'm going to talk about media here because I've touched on it a little bit with the idea of comic strips that in the end didn't happen. I did want to use existing material as much as possible and that is where the comic strip idea came from because I have done a couple for Mr Nakagami. And I did take good advantage of existing material because I had the silhouette portraits that is something I do exclusively for the determined ones really. It's not something that I do very often. It's very, very close to the writing. The other thing that is similar that I just don't really post much of are the character mandalas I do. And I thought because those are so closely tied to the writing as opposed to writing cue answers or whatnot, that would be a really good asset to use. I did have some existing mood boards I'd done for Mood Pitch that was all out of my own artwork because I think that says a lot more about me and the work than using stock images. And I had some of those already for... um, I didn't have them for Snakebite. I did have one... I had a couple for um, Miss Nakagami and a couple for Black Executioner that, as I said, I used for Mood Pitch and didn't get any bites with. For what it's worth. But um, I made some for Snakebite and eventually for Penstemon as well, and I'm really, really happy with those. There's, I think, a lot to be said for mood boards that aren't just a sort of 9x9 nine nine grid that, you know, everybody's seen before. Trying to be innovative with a mood board layout and trying to make it look unique somehow, I think is really, really important. The other media things I do want to talk about is the never give up image I did, which was an art idea I'd had for a very long time and just not gotten round to. And this seemed like a good thing to put on a Friday, just kind of because end of working week, you're almost there, never give up kind of a deal as much as anything, but also the... Feature Friday shout out to the community in a prompt sheet is to sort of, you know, trying to motivate each other, shout outs, you're doing great kind of thing that all of that sort of seemed to mesh to me on a Friday. And the never give up image, for those that haven't seen it, is effectively three images in one. It's sort of like a comic strip, but I did it in ink style instead. So the first image is fairly early on in the project, and then the second image is like the lowest point. And then the third is actually a huge spoiler for the ending, but without any context to the image. You don't necessarily know that, I don't think. And then at the top of the image it says, never give up. Is the deal because I mean the never give up thing is a major theme of the determined ones as well determination never give up all of that sort of stuff the other thing I want to talk about and this is part the, this is where the major cross discipline stuff comes in is Unreal Engine 
because one thing I did, and this was the Tuesday come out swinging, I made trailers in Unreal Engine. I had seen other people make book trailers before using like Canva and I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the ones I've seen have been really, really bad. I mean, I'm not... I mean, I can't think of one off the top of my head that I saw that I liked. I think that's more a limitation of tools than anything else, because if you're using something like Canva, you can very much tell this is a stock image followed by another stock image followed by, ooh, look, time lapse of some stock footage. And there's only so good you can make that. It's the deal. And because I know a lot about Unreal Engine by now, it just, and I've done a segment of an animated music video prior in Unreal Engine, I had a lot of the established knowledge already there. And I know 3D modelling, and texturing, and cinematography, composition and photography, and lighting, particle effects, and Niagara, and VFX, and all of that. It, that's all game design stuff that I brought. This is all cross-discipline, and with all of those trailers, I ended up modelling a lot of stuff. Some of the stuff is made with unreal primitive mes meshes and things like that that I sort of stuck together and made into basic furniture and stuff like that, but most of it is bespokely modelled, bespoke texturing, and bespoke sequenced animation and Niagara and all of that sort of stuff. So with the arrow shot with Kony's trailer, that is an arrow model in two halves that splits and then there's a big Niagara VFX that comes off that and it's all in slow-mo and I'm, I'm just really proud of that VFX is kind of the deal there. But yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a lot of work and it didn't stop in Unreal Engine either. One of the things I did late, because it just seemed like a shame not to, was I did put music to it as well. I did have in my head at one point that I wanted to compose specifically for those trailers, but in the end I didn't feel I had enough time to pull that off. So I took existing stuff I had, some of which I had composed as TV intros, and retimed bits and restructured it to make it fit. And because I'd already had to count the frames to make a trailer template, I used the same template for all of them because why wouldn't I? I didn't have to do much keyframe spotting in Logic, which was nice. And for what it's worth, the Logic portion of retiming music and everything took about 10 minutes a pop. So let's talk about pitches. Now we're away from media, because I don't have that much more to say on that until I talk about pictures. A word of caution with writing pictures first. Different software measures characters differently. And over the course of 31 pictures, you will fall foul of this. You will fall foul of your word processing software and Twitter counting characters differently. So one thing I do with pitches and marketing ideas in general is if I see somebody else has done a pitch or a marketing idea I like, I make note of it, I analyse it, I think about what the key elements are, exactly what they've done, and I steal it. <laughs> that, I'm not ashamed to admit that. And a little while before Spark Pit started, and this tells you how late I was writing my pitches. There was a trend amongst indie authors to take their titles and separate them out. So the letter of each title was on a line of a tweet and shout and out another indie author. So for example, at CB Lansdale, I don't know how to say your name, so I'm not gonna try, had far removed. F, for example, was at somebody who started with the letter F and A was then somebody added with the letter A, and stuff like that. And I thought, that's a neat idea, I'm gonna steal that. And I made that into 
some of it was tropes, so with Miss Nakagami one of the lines was idiots to lovers. I believe another one of the ones was artful deception or artful treason or something like that. I don't have it in front of me so I can't confirm that exactly. But that worked really nicely as a pitch format, except the one for Black Executioner because I had to try and start a line with X and ended up reading the X portion of the dictionary and I, I just don't recommend doing that because it melts your brain. And the one for Penstemon was really difficult to try and fit in the character limit and that was one of the ones that came up like 20 characters too long in the end and that was a bit of a nightmare as well. But it was a really nice pitch format and I felt it was probably my strongest pitch set so I put that with the trailers because again that's part of the come out swinging. If you've got really good media, put that with your best pitch. If you want to stand out, if that's the thing that's going to make you stand out, you need to give it everything. Because you're going to have pictures that are better than others, that is just the reality of it. And if you're trying to make everything sort of overall even, that's kind of the wrong way to do it. If somebody is going to notice one particular media, or something you've done, you need to put that with something else really strong and make somebody go wow. That's my outlook on it anyway. You might disagree with that and hey that's up to you, but that's my view on it at least. The other thing I did, which has been done before to an extent, was meme pictures because I mean they're fucking funny. The one that I've seen before, which I believe was birthed in mood pitch, but I might have that wrong, was The Feminine Urge. And I did think about twisting this into The Masculine Urge, but I didn't really like how that was sounding with Snakebite. It just kind of sounded toxic for some of the stuff that Hanzo does. And don't get me wrong, Hanzo is an asshole, he's a bastard, but He's saying he's toxic doesn't really feel accurate and it's not a vibe I wanted to give in a pitch contest. So I didn't run with that. I ended up doing two different meme pitches. I experimented with more than that for what it's worth. So I did Yes, Sex is Great But, which was just the funniest pitch to do. It was to write one really long run-on sentence just like with the most weird aspects of the book and everything. Like that was so much fun to do. And the other one I did was, bro, do you even lift? And for lift, I did the line, a letter thing there as well. So I had L-I-F-T. And this worked ridiculously well. I couldn't believe it because F I just had for the sake of. So you immediately get the stakes in there and having stakes in the pitch is, I think, really important. But as a format, it just worked so well because T was then treason and because treason is such a big deal there. It was just so much fun and made for such a good format. I recommend trying that out just because it was so good for me. I don't know whether that would be universal or not, but give it a whirl and see what you think. The other main point I want to make with pitches is Isamu. Because I was really, really stuck on what to do on weekends for ages. I just, I didn't know what to do. And then somewhere in my brain goes, hey, how about we have another determined one pitch these? one of the ones I haven't gotten to yet. And that seemed like a really interesting idea. Isamu was kind of the obvious choice there, having, you know, he's somewhat of an extrovert, but also he does a lot of marketing -y stuff and knows how to talk to people and things like that. It just made sense to have him. And the other reason to get him in was I was thinking about... So one of those things you see every so often with writing cues is describe your project as a cocktail. And the summer works in a bar. He knows how to make a good drink. So it just seemed re like a really good match. And the next step from that was describe your project as a meal. 
And the way I went about the cocktail thing, because I didn't want to do the, oh, add a pinch of betrayal and stir in enemies to lovers type deal. I, I didn't want to do that. Again, that might be the path you go down. That's just not what I wanted to do. I wanted to make it into sort of an actual cocktail a bit more. So let's take Mr. Nakakami as an example. I wanted to start with Haru's drink of choice, which is red wine. So then from there, I looked up red wine cocktails, most of which looked fucking horrible, to be quite honest, but I'm not a wine person. And then tried to add in things that reflected moments within the book. So with Haru's, I know there are tears in there, and there's a coffee bean on top, and there's a peach blossom as well, because there's a... There are a few scenes on the Peach Blossom Trail that are really important, and adding something like tears in really helps people twig that that's what you're doing. And it might seem a little random at first until people twig that that's what's up. And what I also did to help was I put a line at the end. So it was, for the cocktail ones, it was, it'll get him drunk enough to... With the meal ones, it was along the lines of treason works up an appetite, I believe was the one I used for um, Hanzo. And that was, I thought, I thought that was a really interesting way of pitching things. And it was a good fun image as well, because that location does appear in Miss Nakagami and in Snakebite, and obviously in a scene on the stage. I don't know, I don't believe it appears in any of the other projects, but it is quite a big location, so it was fun to draw it for me, and fun to draw it Samu. And it was really easy to make all the images as well, because it was the one plate background image with the bar and the Samu, and all I had to do was swap out the cocktails and the meals and make it all line up, and that was really fun to do as well as anything else. So again, trying to find that innovative point, trying to find something that people hadn't done before or hadn't done in that way. I'm going to go back a little bit to the number of days being 31 because that is a prime number and it was really annoying. So regardless of whether I ended up running the A plan or the B plan, I was going to have three days at the end I didn't really know what to do with. I had the idea, as soon as I had Unreal Engine trailers, I was like, okay, I'll put those at the end as well, because end on a bang. But in terms of what pitch I was going to have to go with those, because effectively I'd have to write two pitches to one piece of media, I did not know how I was going to handle that until literally a couple of days before the first one of those needed to go out. And I remembered that during one of the mood pitch events I had taken part in because I believe I did mood pitch twice, it might have been three times I don't know off the top of my head I had had for Haru's project I'd had him pitch that himself with I'm Haru, let me tell you about my life here are some key things that happened, you'll need a handkerchief if you want the full story and I thought that was a that at the time felt like a really solid pitch and I wanted to explore that again and I did the same with Black Executioner and with Snakebite. I didn't do it for Pensaman just because I'd just been pitching Pensaman and it was a project I was least confident in. And this is something I do want to bring up. I went out swinging with, Mas with Miss Nakagami because that was the one I was most confident in. That's not to say I'm not confident in Snakebite. I am not confident in Black Executioner. I am not confident in Pensaman. I That's not true. But, like with the pitches, there's always going to be one that you feel more confident in, one that's better than the rest. The final thing, really, I want to bring up is you have time to do things live. Not everything has to be done by day one. And with me, it was absolutely not. I've talked about writing pitches really late, but also with all of the Kony material, that was all done in July, and a lot of it was done in August as well. So the trailer wasn't finished until early August. Penstemon itself hadn't been fully edited until mid-late August. 
because he didn't need to be. I knew that by then I knew I was running the A plan. And what that meant was I knew I was running that in the fourth week of August. So I had three weeks in August, I could still work on it. There's still 21 days there extra. It doesn't have to be done by the first if it's not going to be pitched on the first. And this also goes back to the prompts template thing of having flexibility. Because if you have fewer projects than I did, or maybe even if you have more, because I know some people have pitched an insane number of manuscripts with an, um, a pitch contest before. But if you have things flexible and there's a pitch you really want to do, but not everything's done for it yet, you can push that back. But really, I think that's probably about the end of the episode. So let's roll on to our usual plugs for the end. If you are published or on the way, please do get in touch. Indie and self-pub authors are the people I am most interested in hearing from. There's a list of stuff in the description I need to know in your initial contact, so please do read that first. I don't want to give automatic no's if and when I get inundated. It's no good for anybody. Should also be noted, it doesn't have to be a novel. Novellas are welcome, anthologies are welcome, whatever. Bring it in. I want to talk about it. It doesn't have to be a specific genre. It doesn't have to be a specific age category. I exclusively write an adult. That doesn't mean you have to. You can bring in Kidlet and stuff. It would be really interesting to learn more about that and talk about it with somebody who does it. I'd genu genuinely be really interested in that. So feel free to bring that in. Contact me via email. I am jade42black at gmail.com. There are still legacy episodes being uploaded that say you can contact me via Twitter. I'd rather you didn't do that. If you do want to find me elsewhere, if you're looking for the podcast home, that is Instagram. I am jade underscore black 21 on there. If you're looking for Twitter, which is the home of my writing stuff, that is jade black 21. Blue Sky, which is more art related for the most part, is Jade Black 21. So relatively easy to find me elsewhere. For what it's worth, with any big announcements, those will go across all the platforms, maybe with the exception of YouTube, if it's, you know, something that's going to be hard to make a video out of. But any big sort of social media announcements will go across all of those platforms. So if you don't follow me everywhere, that doesn't mean you're not going to see things, you're not going to miss anything major. But that is about all, so if you are looking to compete in Spark Pit or another different pitch contest, best of luck to you, I hope I've given you some ideas, or at least some form of springboard, some starting point, or something, something about innovation or cross-discipline. I hope I've been helpful. But for now, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing so you don't miss future content. Copyright J Blank 2023.